China has just unveiled a game-changing leap in transportation technology, and it's sending shockwaves across the globe. Imagine a train that doesn't just roll, it hovers above the tracks, hurtling forward at a mind-blowing thousand kilometers per hour. Yeah, you heard that right. That's the cruising speed of a Boeing 747, reimagined on rails. This isn't science fiction. It's a real, functioning prototype that could get you from New York to LA in under 90 minutes, by train. But is this the dawn of a transportation revolution? Or another overhyped tech fantasy designed to fade like the Hyperloop dream? Stay tuned, because what you're about to see might just be the future of high-speed travel. Over the past century, transportation has evolved at a staggering pace, sometimes so fast it's hard to keep up. But what China is preparing to launch isn't just another step forward. It's a giant leap that raises a bold question. Why? I mean, who wakes up and says, let's build a train faster than a jet? Apparently, China did. And surprisingly, they're not the only ones chasing this dream. To understand why China is racing to build a train that could potentially cross the US in just 90 minutes, we need to shift our focus westward. Because when it comes to high-speed rail innovation, the competition is fierce. From Japan's legendary Shinkansen to Europe's sleek rail networks and America's ambitious prototypes, the global race for ultra-high-speed transport is heating up. But China? They don't just want to compete. They want to dominate. And if history has taught us anything, when China sets a goal, the world watches. So to make sense of this next-level speed war, let's take a deep dive into the global battle for the fastest train on Earth. Right now, the benchmark in maglev technology belongs to Japan, with its cutting-edge SC maglev clocking an astonishing 603 kilometers per hour. That's already fast enough to make commercial airlines sweat. But then China looked at that and essentially said, Hold my great wall. Their vision? A vacuum tube maglev that could hit a mind-bending thousand kilometers per hour, almost matching the cruising speed of a Boeing 747. Now, surpassing Japan in this space is no easy task. Japan has been engineering the future of rail for over 50 years. The SC maglev isn't just some futuristic prototype. It's the next generation extension of the legendary Shinkansen already known worldwide for its precision, safety, and speed. While other nations treat maglev as a novelty, Japan treats it as a strategy. By the 2030s, this system won't just exist. It'll be fully operational, commercially integrated, and redefining domestic travel. They've been in it for the long haul, investing in magnetic levitation since the 1960s. And now, decades of patience and persistence are finally paying off. But China's not just chasing Japan, because halfway around the world, Europe has been quietly perfecting its own high-speed rail network, refining, upgrading, and pushing the limits in a race that's less flashy, but just as ambitious. Across Europe, the high-speed rail game is already strong, and getting stronger. Trains like France's TGV, Germany's ICE, and Spain's AVE have quietly transformed regional travel, delivering speed efficiency, and reliability at a level that rivals even the maglev technology. These aren't experimental models. They're real-world, revenue-generating marvels that prove you don't need magnetic levitation to leave traffic in the dust. In fact, Europe's rail network is so advanced that it's setting a gold standard for practical high-speed travel. But shift your gaze further west, and the picture changes dramatically. The United States? still stuck in the slow lane. Despite decades of ambition, high-speed rail in America remains more of a dream than a destination. Between political gridlock, aging infrastructure, and an unshakable car-first culture, progress has been agonizingly slow. Take the Acela Express, for example, currently the fastest train in the US. But with an average speed of just 68 miles per hour, or 110 kilometers per hour, it barely competes with Europe's suburban lines, let alone Japan's Shinkansen or China's Fuxing. So why even bring up the US? Because of one bold, now almost mythical idea, the Hyperloop. 
When Elon Musk first proposed a vacuum-sealed pod flying through tubes at airline speeds, it sounded like science fiction turned reality. Investors jumped in, companies formed, test tracks were laid down. But today, the Hyperloop hype has hit a wall. Virgin Hyperloop has scrapped its passenger plans, and test sites like the one near Las Vegas are gathering dust. What was once hailed as the future of transportation now looks like a cautionary tale of tech ambition outrunning engineering reality. And that brings us full circle, back to China. Because so far, the best we've seen in action is Japan's 603 km per hour maglev. But China wants to shatter that ceiling. Why? Because no country has mastered high-speed rail like China. They've built the world's largest high-speed rail network, stretching over 40,000 kilometers, and it keeps expanding at breakneck speed. With deep government funding, top-tier engineering talent, and almost no bureaucratic red tape, if China says it's building something, it's getting built. So now we face the big question. Can China really push a maglev train to 1,000 kilometers per hour? Floating on magnets is one thing, but doing it at near jet speed? That's a whole different challenge. To find out how they might pull this off, we need to make one final detour to the land of physics. Here's the fundamental problem. Traditional wheeled trains can't handle 1,000 kilometers per hour, not even close. Think of it this way. Imagine driving your car at 200 miles per hour on regular tires. Sure, it sounds thrilling, until your rubber melts faster than a marshmallow over a campfire, especially the moment you hit the brakes. The same principle applies to trains. The faster you go, the more brutal the friction between the wheels and the rails. Push past a certain threshold and the heat buildup becomes catastrophic, melting metal, deforming tracks, and shredding wheels. In other words, try to hit jet-like speeds on a standard rail system and you're not just risking damage, you're engineering a disaster. That's why maglev, or magnetic levitation, isn't just a futuristic gimmick. It's the only viable pathway to reaching these extreme speeds. No contact, no friction, no limits just pure, unchained velocity. But how exactly does levitating a train help it reach speeds once reserved for aircraft? To answer that, we've got to break down the science behind the magnets and the engineering magic that keeps this beast hovering. So how do you even begin to approach speeds that rival commercial jets? At this point, there is only one real solution, magnetic levitation, or maglev. Think of it as a hovercraft on steroids, Except instead of gliding on air, this train floats above the track using powerful magnetic fields. No wheels, no friction, no heat, just pure uninterrupted motion. It's the secret sauce that allows maglev systems to achieve speeds wheeled trains could only dream of. But forget the sci-fi vibes for a second. How does this actually work? What's the real science behind making a train float like a spacecraft and move like a missile? Let's break down the magnetic magic that turns steel and circuits into the world's fastest ride. Here's where the real magic kicks in, because maglev trains don't just float, they fly forward using magnetism. The entire system runs on two core principles, magnetic levitation to lift the train and magnetic propulsion to push it forward. No wheels, no engines, just the raw force of physics in action. And in the most advanced systems, it gets even more mind-blowing. They use something called superconductors, special materials that, when cooled to ultra-low temperatures, can carry electricity with zero resistance. That's right, no energy loss, no heat, just unfiltered power. This allows them to generate incredibly strong magnetic fields, far more powerful than what's possible with conventional tech. The result? A train that doesn't just defy friction, it practically rewrites the rules of motion. So now that we've unlocked the how, the next question is what happens when you put that system inside a vacuum tube and aim for a thousand kilometers per hour? These strong magnetic fields don't just lift the train, they also launch it forward. With no physical contact between the train and the track, there's zero friction to hold it back. That means higher speeds, smoother rides, and virtually no wear and tear compared to traditional trains. So, is that the secret sauce? Not quite. 
because once you start pushing speeds north of 1,000 km per hour, a new enemy appears, air resistance. And trust me, it's not just a gentle breeze. At those speeds, air becomes your worst nightmare. It's like trying to sprint through a pool of thick honey. Every inch you progress feels like you're dragging a freight train behind you. But leave it to China to level up again, with a solution that sounds straight out of a sci-fi movie, near vacuum tunnels. Yep, they're literally sucking the air out of the track. These near vacuum tubes drastically reduce air pressure, which means there's barely any air resistance left to fight. Think of it like this. Trying to break speed records in normal air is like sprinting underwater. But inside a vacuum tube, you're on a dry track. Full sprint, no drag. Just pure speed. With the air resistance problem solved, the train can now hit jet-like speeds. Without the turbulence, without the noise, and without the fuel burn. It's fast. It's clean. And it might just be the future of ground transportation. And here's where things go from groundbreaking to downright futuristic. China's engineers aren't just building a train. They're fusing aerospace engineering with high-speed rail. It's like taking the precision of a bullet train and strapping it to the aerodynamics of a rocket. Picture this, a train that floats effortlessly above the track, kept airborne by magnetic forces. Then it glides through a low-pressure vacuum tube, slicing through resistance like a Formula One car in a wind tunnel. But here's the kicker. This isn't transportation as we know it. It's a 1,000 km per hour ground-based rocket dressed in a sleek aerodynamic shell. And it's not just a flex, it's a mission. The goal? To get you from Beijing to Shanghai in just 90 minutes. Forget the four-hour flights, the airport hassle, or the Uber ride stuck in traffic. This train doesn't just beat them, it obliterates them. But that raises the big question. Why go this big in the first place? What's driving China to lead this speed race into the future? Shanghai's 1,000 km per hour maglev train is set to completely revolutionize transportation, delivering unmatched speed, economic growth, and sustainable innovation. This game-changing technology is not just changing how we travel, it's reshaping the future of connectivity itself. Imagine a future where a one-hour economic circle is the norm where every major economic hub is just an hour away from each other. This high-speed maglev train is not just about connecting cities. It's about igniting economic growth through increased trade, tourism, and regional development. By linking megacity clusters, this train will essentially connect the dots across China's economy, making previously underserved areas accessible to major markets. This could bring new opportunities and help ease congestion in the larger cities promoting a more balanced economic landscape. With 45,000 kilometers of high-speed rail already in production, integrating this maglev train into the existing network will accelerate growth, bringing immediate economic benefits and ensuring a more sustainable future. But it doesn't stop there. The environmental impact is just as groundbreaking. As an electric vehicle, the maglev train uses 30% less energy than other high-speed maglevs and 50% less than airliners, cutting greenhouse gas emissions significantly. We're talking about a reduction of 2 million tons of CO2 annually, the equivalent of removing 1.5 coal-fired power plants from the grid. And with no wheel-on-rail contact, the ride is not only quieter, but it also reduces noise pollution, offering a cleaner, greener alternative to traditional trains and planes. Now, let's talk about the social benefits. The maglev train's design eliminates the risk of derailment, ensuring a safer and smoother ride. With fewer moving parts and minimal maintenance required due to its quiet operation, it's not only a safer choice, but also a more economical one. Faster, safer, and more comfortable, this train really delivers the best of both worlds. But of course, it's not without challenges. Speed is exhilarating, but only until something goes wrong. At a staggering 1,000 kilometers per hour, a maglev crash wouldn't just be disastrous, it could be practically unsurvivable. The kinetic energy at this speed follows the speed squared rule, meaning the energy released in a collision would be immeasurably greater than any previous train disaster we've seen. Just think back to the 2006 German maglev crash, a tragic reminder of the devastating potential when things go wrong at such extreme speeds. 
That crash occurred at just 120 miles per hour, or 193 kilometers per hour, when the train collided with a maintenance vehicle, tragically claiming 23 lives. Now imagine multiplying that energy nearly tenfold. At 1,000 kilometers per hour, the results could be unimaginable. Evacuation? Impossible. With elevated tracks, passengers would be trapped in the event of an emergency. But the dangers don't stop there. Even the most advanced braking systems, like those in JR Central's SC Maglev, are still unproven at such extreme speeds. The technology may not be ready to handle the immense forces involved, raising serious concerns about safety at these unprecedented velocities. Then there's the financial challenge. China has already invested over $33 billion into high-speed rail, with earlier maglev estimates in 2002 reaching $19.3 billion. To take this 1,000 km per hour project off the ground, low vacuum tubes, superconducting magnets, and advanced infrastructure will be required, potentially making it the most expensive rail project ever. But if the demand doesn't justify the astronomical cost, this could deal a serious blow to China's rail industry. And let's not forget the cautionary tale of the Hyperloop. Elon Musk's ambitious 1,200 km per hour vacuum tube train failed due to exorbitant costs, technical challenges, and the inability to commercialize. Hyperloop One was shut down by 2023, proving that no amount of flashy marketing can guarantee success if the technology doesn't scale. So is China making the same mistakes? While a larger population may help, the demand must match the staggering investment, or this could become a billion-dollar ghost train. This isn't just about speed. It's about whether humanity can truly control such a powerful force. So with all this in mind, when can you actually ride one? Well, the answer may be more shocking than you think. Surprisingly, China's 1,000 km per hour maglev train isn't some distant sci-fi dream. It's closer to reality than ever. Prototype testing is already underway, and by late 2023, a two-kilometer low-vacuum tube in Shangxi recorded a jaw-dropping speed of 623 kilometers per hour, setting a new maglev world record. The next milestone? A 60-kilometer test track designed for full-speed trials pushes this futuristic system toward commercial viability. China has its sights set on commercial operation by 2035, but the road, or rather the vacuum tunnel, ahead is far from simple. Unlike traditional high-speed rail, this technology demands massive infrastructure, including sealed vacuum tubes and superconducting systems, making it a costly and complex endeavor. And then there's the elephant in the room, regulatory approval. Certifying passenger safety at near supersonic speeds is a massive hurdle yet to be cleared. But the real question is, will the world follow China's lead? The Hyperloop dream may have collapsed under the weight of sky-high costs and technical setbacks, but China's impressive track record in building the world's largest high-speed rail network shows it might just succeed where others failed. With the stakes this high, the global transportation future may very well depend on how this mega-project unfolds. So what's your take on Shanghai's 1,000 km per hour maglev train? Is it the future of travel, or just another high-speed fantasy? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below and join the conversation. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the world's fastest train and its potential to reshape global transportation, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a moment of the world's most awe-inspiring engineering marvels. Until next time, stay curious, stay inspired, and remember, today's innovations are tomorrow's realities. Catch you in the next video.